Okay, I sure hope you're seeing a single a screen today. How are we doing? Okay, I, all right, this is just a, a, a brief follow-up uh, from last week. Homer, in explaining to us um, why the French were more enlightened in their treatment of the uh, Native Americans than the Spanish, um, mentioned this, this wonderful analysis of American culture, looking at the root of the ancestors. Um, and his ancestors, of course, are uh, would be considered from New France. Um, and there's an annex to New France uh, down, down here in Louisiana, because that's where uh, uh, a number of them came after being uh, e expelled uh, by the British. They came down the Mississippi and became Cajuns. Um, but anyway, this is, this is good, and it's certainly good for our purposes in the history of Mexico, because you see El Norte, uh, and we talked about Santa Fe uh, being uh, <laughs> a really old, old city way before um, uh, anything in, in Florida. So uh, Santa Fe was uh, uh, going in the 1580s. Um, then um, a shout out to uh, Jim Teisel. Um, what uh, Jim did is uh, got on our, our uh, bandwagon uh, for local history. And what we're trying to do is get uh, more group participation um, and uh, if you spot an interesting sign, an interesting statue, or an interesting marker, um, uh, 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 investigate it uh, and uh, uh, come and, and, and do a show, show and tell. Uh, we're not going to have time for uh, a show and tell today because it's, uh, uh, I, I, I've got a full uh, load of slides. Um, the other thing uh, uh, Jim sent was a, uh, uh, a photo of a, a bridge dedication, and there's a huge story behind that, which I'm glad to go into, but not this week. Okay, so uh, a, a history of the, the Golden State uh, Warriors. This is a shorter version than I've done in the past, uh, so I, and I, but still I'm going to have to uh, talk real quick. Um, rapidly. So it uh, started in 1962. Will Chamberlain uh, came um, uh, from uh, uh, Philadelphia. They'd been the Philadelphia Warriors forever. Um, and they played their first game at uh, Rudy's alma mater, uh, uh, USF Memorial uh, Gym. Um, and this was, uh, if you notice the dates, during the, the Cuban uh, Missile Crisis. Um, Wilt had an interesting teammate known as the Mad Russian, <laughs> and he, he was born in Manchuria. This is Tom Macheri for those basketball fans, and Bill Walker goes to St. Mary's games, and he will have seen Tom Macheri's jersey uh, uh, hanging on the wall because it was retired by, by St. Mary's. Um, so he's born in Manchuria, and he spends World War II in a Japanese prison camp. Um, uh, his parents were uh, had fled the, the the Bolsheviks, and that's why we're, they were living far, far away. He was a, 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 a white Russian. Um, so he was uh, raised in San Francisco. Um, he was drafted by the Philadelphia Warder, Warriors in 1961 out of St. Mary's and fortuitously got to come back home <laughs> and, and play in uh, uh, the, the gym where St. Mary's had, had played their arch rival USF. So he, he was a, a, an all-star for the Warriors, um, San Francisco Warriors. 
Um, and here he is speaking out the um, uh, uh, Will, Chamber, uh, Will Chamberlain's nemesis, Bill Russell, number six. <laughs> he's got he's got hops. So um, uh, as I said, uh, arrived in San Francisco after the end of World War II and being released from a uh, a camp uh, in J Japan, and he went to, as you can see, Lowell uh, High School in San Francisco. So coming back to San Francisco, Pepper is raising his hands. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Coming back uh, to San Francisco with a professional basketball team was great. So as I said, Bill will have seen his uh, number 20 jersey hanging on the wall at St. Mary's. And uh, uh, Mashiri also John. got his um, a jersey um, uh, retired by the Warriors. Yes, Jim. There's a arrow on the screen of all the slides. It may be an overlay of some sort. Oh, we may have done it, but we don't know how to get rid of it. Oh, well, why don't you check out? Just, just go bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll, I'll let you back in. Uh, uh, apparently, apparently, this is uh, my wife joining on a companion. Uh, I, no, no, it's still there. God, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Is it still there, Jim? Yes, but, uh, you know, we can put up with it. I just wanted to see if that was accidental or not and if it could be removed. It's always something. It's always something. <laughs> okay. um, it's probably in your markup. You can do a markup on Zoom and you, you can probably erase it, but you probably are not too sure how you managed to do a markup. It looks like obviously an error. Okay. Uh, 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 but can I proceed? Is it, uh, uh, can you yes, see? John. Well, now it's blocking the screen. Oh, well, I, no, not necessarily. I think he just has one photo as that. Go on to the next slide and we'll see. Yeah, no, that, that screen. Uh, basically, yeah. How's that? How's that? Yeah. Okay, can you mute me? Can you mute me? Yeah, let's go to our picture here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy okay this is interesting. sound effects are great john yeah yeah i'm sure uh so this is actually fascinating um uh, uh, the the warriors got uh uh in the first season they did terrible uh here uh and they were able to draft uh nate thurman uh, and they had their own version of the twin towers for uh, for a, a year but then Wilt mysteriously got sick and the Warriors doctors misdiagnosed him with having carditis, endocarditis. And they told the Warrior management, unload him as quick as you can. Chamberlain is flawed. And so uh, they traded uh, Wilt at bargain prices, where to? Back to Philly. He, he, he liked, uh, he was from Philly. Uh, he went to high school in Philly. So he was, he was glad to get back and the Warriors did not get all that they could have gotten for him because they thought he was uh, damaged goods. But they had laid away a, a, enough resources that they could later, a few months later, draft Rick Barry. Uh, by the way, uh, this is uh, me and Nate. Um, I uh, had some uh, outpatient re uh, responsibilities for a while, and we were opening a new clinic in uh, Richmond, and I managed to uh, uh, have the idea if I just called the, the director of community relations, uh, maybe we could get somebody famous to come over, and I called the number, and Nate Thurman answered the phone. <laughs> so the Warriors get Rick Berry, um, uh, and uh, uh, based on a bogus medical opinion. And Rick Barry does get us a championship in 1975. Um, 
the the coach of uh, this team um, was a teammate that came from the Philadelphia Warriors, Al Adels. But they he put together a motley crew along with the the uh, colorful uh, warrior owner at the time, Franklin Muley. You can see him in a Sherlock Holmes hat. Uh, um, and this motley crew uh, 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 won the championship. Uh, uh, widely considered uh, uh, the, one of the biggest upsets in the uh, history of the championship. All right, so now it's time to get to the current edition. That's the distant past. Uh, we get a, a championship in 1975, and you have to wait. I had to wait. We all had to wait 40 years before we got another championship in 2015. And who is responsible for this? A guy you've never heard of. That's how fickle history is. And it takes about 10 years, sometimes Ramsey says 20 years, uh, for history to clarify itself. And looking back now, you can see that this guy, Larry Riley, who you've never heard of, um, although you've heard his uh, name, uh, that'll be clear in a second, uh, came to the NBA uh, uh, with 25 years experience in the NBA as an assistant to Don, Don Nelson, the, also a colorful uh, former player uh, coach uh, with the Warriors at the time. But he quickly moved on uh, to scouting and eventually became a, a general manager, uh, which was a, a, a great blessing because watch what he does. He saw... This kid, this scrawny 160-pound sophomore, play in March Madness in 2008. And this little scrawny kid does something crazy that everybody thought at the time was just a fluke. Um, he, he goes nuts. Uh, and he has to struggle. <laughs> He's a bit undersized, 160 pounds. Uh, he gets a lot of rebounds uh, now, but he didn't get many rebounds then. Um, and he gets, by the end of this, a national audience after beating three top-notch teams almost single-handedly, Gonzaga, Georgetown, and uh, Wisconsin, all in very dramatic uh, 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 victories. So a national audience, but his father um, is a former NBA player. So Del Curry uh, and uh, a, a um, onlooker at the tournament was a, a, a former high school kid who just turned pro LeBron James. And after hearing about the, the first couple of victories, he got tickets to watch <laughs> Curry play. Uh, so he recognized uh, uh, talent. And the reason I decided to um, uh, bump uh, uh, the uh, uh, tail end of, uh, the t uh, uh, of Juan Cabrillo uh, was this last weekend was just a, a, a curry at his best. Um, and uh, everybody was wondering what he'd do uh, in his uh, game seven. Um, and he, uh, the, uh, uh, drew record number of TV uh, viewers. Um, and he delivered, he scored 50 points and gave an inspirational uh, speech to his uh, teammates, not something he is uh, inclined uh, to do. Um, so uh, his father always dreamed of uh, playing with the Knicks. Uh, his father wound up playing for uh, Cleveland and Toronto and end up in, in Charlotte. Um, and here he is wearing a Golden State Warriors. But what's his wife doing wearing a Blazer uh, jersey? They have another son who played for the Portland Trail Blazers. In, uh, and they met in the first round of a, a, a playoff series. Um, so. Um, Curry uh, and his father wanted to play for the Knicks. Uh, Larry Riley 
uh, asked him to come and try out for the Warriors. Um, and Curry and his father said, no, we don't want to play and we're not coming to try out. Well, Riley had his eye on Curry. He saw something uh, clearly. And Riley and um, Curry played at St. Mary's um, the, the year after his, his dramatic breakout. He stayed for um, his junior year to learn how to play point guard um, instead of being the shooting guard. Davidson lost a lot of good players, so they didn't make March Madness, but they, they made the runner-up tournament, and so they faced St. Mary's and came to St. Mary's. And I saw their game, and so did uh, Larry Riley, and he saw something, and he said, I'm going to draft you anyway, and he drafted them, and it's worked out, and Curry named his firstborn kid Riley. Um, but after drafting him, uh, Curry kept having uh, injuries, his ankle mainly. Um, and after three years where he hadn't done much, uh, fans like me uh, were going to uh, be asking, is this a mistake? And this is why history takes 10, 20 years to settle down before you can look back and uh, see that all of us who were so nervous about Curry in his first three years and were criticizing Riley and the poor owner, the poor owner got uh, so fed up, he sold the the team to Lakeup, the current uh, owner. But it says really bad timing for him because Curry's breakout year was in his fourth year. Um, but all in 2011, uh, Curry was considered to be a bust, but Larry Riley made a pretty good decision and drafted a kid named Clay Thompson at number 11. Okay, now you've got two pillars uh, of the big three. Um, and it's Larry Riley who's put up those uh, uh, pillars. Then um, as soon as Lacob comes in as the new owner, he and Riley, who's the general manager, uh, decide to switch uh, coaches. They fired Don Nelson. He was a popular and colorful coach, but he wasn't winning and he wasn't very good on defense. Mark Jackson was, and he came in and changed uh, war Warriors culture to being more hard nose and less uh, uh, laissez faire. So here they are in happier days. It's not going to work out. Um, now, Mark Jackson gave Curry attitude. Um, and if you've ever seen um, uh, Curry do the shimmy, he's he's channeling Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson made that that shimmy move uh, 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 popular, and he gave Curry attitude. There's somebody else that's going to give him attitude, as you'll see. But the other interesting thing, which I find just fascinating, they're both very religious, um, and uh, uh, Curry. Uh, went to a lot of religious uh, schools uh, growing up. Mark Jackson is a, a has his own congregation in Van Nuys, um, and uh, the um, uh, a quote from uh, Steph Curry. Uh, he he he's uh, channeled uh, his belief in in uh, Christianity. And he writes uh, on uh, uh, Bible verses on on his shoes. I can do uh, all things, um, and I think that uh, somebody told me that's from uh, Philippines. Is is that right, Shigeko? Um Anyway, it's Philippians. <laughs> Philippians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I stand. I stand corrected. I, I, uh, Philippians. Uh, thank thank good, goodness I, ha I have a sympathetic audience <laughs> who can take my <laughs> mispronunciation and uh, all the technical problems we seem to get. Next uh, week, we'll have a tutorial on the verses or the chapters of the Bible. Okay, Shigeko, it's on you.
Um, uh, so Curry's breakout year is his fourth year in the league. And all of a sudden, the Warriors have two really good guards. And the other one is Monta Ellis. So uh, Larry Riley uh, decides, okay, and this is another good decision that, that Larry Riley makes, uh, but he's not going to get any credit, quite the opposite. So Monte Ellis was popular with fran uh, fans, and they trade him to Milwaukee for a big man who's prone to injuries, Andrew Bogut. And he was out for the year with back injuries uh, when he came. So everybody thought Larry Riley uh, uh, was, was an idiot, uh, wh wh damaged goods. Of course, he, he winds up being an important piece of their uh, first championship. So um, the, the, the fans are so upset. It happened that year that uh, the Warriors were hosting All-Star uh, Weekend, and they decided uh, to retire Chris Mullen's uh, jersey. And uh, uh, Lakeup got up to introduce uh, Mullins and was booed by the San Francisco fans, well as the Oakland Coliseum fans. Um, and uh, what was his response? He demoted Riley. Riley was no longer general manager. Here, here Riley is, has accumulated uh, a, a lot of chips. Um, but he did hire a capable re uh, replacement, Bob Myers, who's the current guy, pretty good. But he inherited an already uh, uh, assembled uh, team. Uh, and it turned out that both Curry and Bogut over overcame those injuries. Uh, and then there was one more piece. You could say it was Riley's luck. Uh, I'll tell you the story and you determine if it was luck. But as a, the head guy, he's demoted. He's no longer general manager. He's he's reporting to Bob Myers, but he's the head scout, and he has in mind one more uh, uh, draft pick, and uh, it's not a high draft pick. He's got three draft picks because he's been squirreling them away very wisely. It turns out, and he on the third draft pick, he goes for this. Third pillar, uh, Draymond Green. And that means everybody in the league passed over Draymond Green because it's a second round. But get this, the Warriors had squirreled away an er even earlier second round pick. So the Warriors didn't pick him until they had uh, to use their last third draft. So uh, uh, is... Uh, uh, Draymond hold a grudge? Uh, yes. <laughs> he can name in order all 34 players that were chosen before him. <laughs> and he knows what team did it. So he hates every team in the league because they all passed over him. But of course, the Warriors passed over him uh, twice. Uh, he, when he's more philosophical, he says, I understand. I was a tweener. They didn't know whether whether I I, I was a, a power forward or a shooting forward, but he's redefined that tweener position, and now people are trying to get tweeners. And uh, he was a very strong defensive player, which didn't come uh, through to the other team uh, uh, teams in the draft. But he's the second person that's given Steph attitude. And those of us that, that follow and watch uh, uh, Warriors uh, knows how he pumps up Curry. Um, John, could you explain how the Warriors passed over him twice? They, I, I, I get it. He wasn't picked up by anybody in the second round. And the Warriors picked him in the third round. Where's the twice come no, from? No, 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 no. In the second round, there's only two rounds. Um, so it goes out to uh, number 60, right? And so they found two other uh, players that they thought were better that they added to the team. Uh, I know uh, number, uh, their, their, their second pick, their first pick in the second round was Festus Azili, who you see is an announcer um, uh, on the uh, local uh, uh, post-game post uh, shows. 
um, but uh, uh, they um, uh, uh, and and so he had uh, uh, three picks in the first sixty, um, and that's uh, with the very last pick uh, he got. Thank you for the uh, thumbs up, Bob. I I, I want to uh, commend Bob and recommend you all give me some uh, 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 hand signals. It's under reactions at the bottom of your your screen. I, I I love the feedback, and of course, feel free to interrupt me anytime. And if you you don't want to interrupt me, raise your hand. There's also a raise your hand uh, reaction uh, uh, but, uh, button. Okay, so Bogut comes, his back gets better. He goes into the locker room, but he's from Australia. He's Croatian, but he, 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 his family immigrated to Australia. And if you have an Australian friend, I, I bet he's not religious. They are not a religious bunch down there. And he was turned off by Mark Jackson's locker room, which he thought was being used uh, as, uh, for recruitment to his, his uh, church. Um, and there was another problem. I'm skipping ahead here just to show uh, this uh, uh, Stanford alum, Bill, um, uh, uh, Jaron uh, Collins, um, who uh, became an assistant on the warrior operation much, much later. Uh, but this is the best picture I could see to put him in the context of, of, of the future coach. Uh, and Jaron Collins uh, is one of the Collins twins from Stanford. Uh, uh, he, he has a twin brother, uh, Jason Collins, and they've appeared on um, TV shows. Just to keep things uh, straight, Jason often wears a T-shirt that says, I'm the straight one. Um so uh, here's an interesting wrinkle. Uh, Curry was having all these ankle problems. And in Mark Jackson's uh, early year, he, he took Curry with him to his congregation in Van Nuys, where his ankle was anointed. Um, and his congregation uh, uh, blessed this Christian ambassador. Um, and uh, Curry's comment after attending was this this was a more passionate kind of congregation than he was uh, used to uh, in uh, back in 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 Charlotte. All this is re uh, reported um, by Marcus Thompson, uh, who um, used to be a columnist for the uh, East Bay. Uh, times uh, during the, uh, uh, the the early successful years, he's gone on and has a, a national gig uh, now. Um, and uh, so uh, the the religion uh, uh, started to interfere with uh, uh, Lacob's uh, uh, estimation of Jackson. And he was particularly annoyed that when the, the team didn't uh, play on weekends, that Jackson was never available for community um, uh, uh, activities uh, representing uh, the Warriors. Uh, now, uh, uh, Lake of later said that no one liked Mark Jackson, and maybe that, that, that's true too, but who knows. Um, uh, so, enter Steve Kerr. Um, and he is replacing a popular and successful coach, just like Monta uh, Ellis uh, gets traded away. Now Lakeup is making a second uh, 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 daring move, um, and so you can uh, uh, be mad at Lakeup for demoting Riley, which wasn't fair. Uh, but you got to admire the moxie uh, where he uh, will fire a popular and successful coach. The Warriors record had been improving, improving. And when that happened, Curry resisted. Curry protested. And here he was now. He was uh, clearly an up and coming star. He'd overcome his uh, injury. He had this very personal connection 
on attitude, on religion, um, and uh, he, he uh, resisted. Um, all right, so now let's turn to uh, Steve Kerr. He is the replacement. And you'll see that Steve Kerr was uh, able to win Curry's uh, affection. Um, you need a little backstory. If you've heard um, Steve Kerr comment on gun violence, you wonder where that emotion is coming from. He was an 18 year old freshman playing basketball when his father was murdered. He was assassinated. He was the present president of the American University in Beirut. Um, the president of the American An uh, University uh, in Re uh, Beirut. Hello, Carol. Um, and uh, he uh, um, uh, was targeted because Hezbollah uh, wanted to get rid of Amer American influence. That hasn't worked out so well for Lebanon. Um, he was a noted expert on the Arab world. He was uh, Malcolm, his uh, 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 Steve's father was born in uh, Beirut, uh, but his grandparents were also in the uh, University of uh, American University of Beirut. So um, uh, uh, Kerr often went to, to uh, Beirut when he was uh, a kid. Um, the um, uh, so when Steve was born, though, um, uh, his father decided, okay, we're going to raise the kids uh, back in uh, America, get them uh, an American education. And so he, he came back and took time off um, uh, until the kids got out of uh, high school um, and before he resumed his uh, a passion uh, for um, uh, Arab affairs. Um, and, and here's uh, uh, Steve as a high school uh, student. His grandparents, just a word, um, were, were American Presbyterian humanitarian and educators. And this is a, a long tradition of American um, uh, uh, Christian missionaries. Uh, so his grandparent first got involved after the, the Armenian uh, uh, massacre uh, by the uh, by the Turks. Um, his grandmother was uh, a, a, a volunteer in an orphanage uh, in Lebanon. Um, and they both uh, stayed at, uh, in uh, uh, Lebanon and, and pursued uh, academic uh, uh, careers. Uh, all uh, the American missionaries in the Middle East is laid out in this uh, uh, very interesting book. Uh, power, faith, and, and fantasy. And it goes back to show the roots of 1820s, the 1820s with the, uh, uh, during the first, no, it would be the second great awakening. The uh, first great awakening in, in America was in the 1600s, but there was another one uh, in, in the 1820s. Fascinating stuff. Um, so uh, it grew up in, in Southern Cal. This is a, a, a familiar scenario in suburban uh, houses. Um, and you've noticed, you've seen Bruce Fraser uh, a, a, a million times. I'll show, I'll point him out to you in just a second. He was one of Steve Kerr's best friends. Um, and, and now he's still with Kerr as a, an assistant to the Golden State Warriors. And uh, when you see uh, uh, Curry getting special attention from uh, uh, an assistant coach, that's Bruce Fraser. You'll recognize him. Um, so after his father uh, was assassinated, Curry's playing, trying to play basketball as a freshman, walk on, by the way. Um, and uh, uh, this, this is Bruce Fraser uh, back in those days. Um, and uh, uh, a walk on because nobody thought everybody thought he was too skinny. Sound familiar? Um, so, uh, but uh, he was a three point shooter. This is Bruce Fraser. 
uh, you, you, you'll you, you'll uh, recognize him instantly if you've been watching Warriors games. So um, Kerr got the news that his father had uh, been assassinated. Uh, he just went out and ran. He didn't know what else to do, and he decided on the run. There was one thing he could do, and and that was play basketball. So he just he didn't miss a beat practiced and he played the next game a uh, moment of silence uh and he uh is this, uh, gets the ball and he makes his first shot you know kind of uh movie stuff um but the darker side comes out uh of human nature uh when, when the arch rival arizona state uh students start chanting PLO, PLO. And he, uh, according to Bruce Frazier, just broke down, uh, had to go to the locker room, uh, came back out, though, and kept playing. Um, and so this is uh, uh, Bruce Frazier's uh, words that he's been through that. So going through something like that allows you to be pretty damn philosophical about uh, uh, taking a, a loss on the basketball court. Um, all right, so uh, Kerr, uh, he uh, finishes his college uh, career uh, and he becomes a, a journeyman traveling around. He finally winds up with the Chicago Bulls, Chicago Bulls, 1993. Uh, so he's he's there. Um, and uh, his uh, 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 first year there, Michael Jer Jordan has taken a year off. Um, he thought he'd go and try to play baseball. <laughs> so he, he, he I, I don't, I can't remember. He couldn't throw a curve or he couldn't hit a curve. Uh, and he comes back to the Bulls and finds this uh, new shooting guard in his position. And they they uh, went into practice, and Michael Jordan punches Steve Kerr because um, uh, Steve Kerr doesn't give uh, give an inch. Uh, he he stood up uh, uh, to, to Jordan. This is uh, from a a current documentary, the the Last Dance, uh, about the the final year of the Chicago Bulls, who won six championships. The Warriors have won four with uh, Curry and some of us dream. Uh, could you? Could we get the six? Um, but this is a uh, uh, quite a thing at the time. Um, uh, punching a guy so hard in the face that he gets a black eye. This has been dramatized in, in a graphic uh, uh, novel. Um, and uh, uh, the next day at practice, uh, a contrite Michael Jordan comes and apologizes. Um, and they talked for about 10 minutes. Nobody knows exactly what was said, uh, but uh, they became close. And uh, Kerr has said standing up to the Jordan was the best thing he ever uh, did. Um, uh, and the, the relationship improved and there's one famous uh, game where uh, in the championship, Kerr hits the game winner off a pass from Michael Jordan. And uh, <laughs> if we have time at the end, I'll show you a, a, a video of uh, a Kerr, Kerr showing his sense of humor about that turn of events, humor and grace. I'll save it to the end. We'll see if we have time. Uh, so uh, at his next stop after uh, the Chicago Bulls is the San Antonio Spurs. So he stays with the Bulls long enough uh, to earn um, three uh, championship rings. He goes to the Spurs and gets a couple of more. Uh, so he's very lucky. Uh, he uh, was mentored by Phil Jackson, a winning coach with the Chicago Bulls. 
and Greg Popovich, the w winning coach with the San Antonio Spurs. And I just want to show my T-shirt. Um, Popovich is quite outspoken and very uh, political uh, on the same side as uh, Steve Kerr. So this is my uh, T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> so uh, there you go. Um, so he gets, uh, oh, three more championships. I couldn't see your T-shirt, John. Oh, really? Can you see it now? No. Well, um, I don't know why you can't see it, Jim. Yeah, you Maybe. might have hit, hit, hit your speaker thing. I'll tell you what, Jim, I'll send it to you later. Do, do others see the T-shirt? Yeah, it's his little, he's wearing it. It's just in his little thumbnail. Oh, I have to, I have to go up to oh. his. Yes, you do. The, the view. Yeah, you have to make me bigger, Jim. I do. I, there, <laughs> I, now I can see it. In the speaker. Got it. Okay. Um, so uh, three more championship rings uh, bonded with Tim Duncan, uh, uh, their star. Uh, mm -hmm. Often played uh, Michael Jordan. They continued continued their their friendship. And you notice when uh, basketball players talk to each other on the floor, they always hide their mouths because <laughs> so many guys have gotten in trouble from lip readers. Uh, so uh oh, oh here's the uh uh here here's the t-shirt that i'm wearing um and so he uh, bonded with that and then he becomes uh an executive uh uh alternating with broadcasting and commentating and also just keeping detailed notebooks about what he'd ever do if he should become a coach <laughs> notebooks and notebooks um and uh he also uh started playing very early uh with a uh, motion offense uh, uh popovich had a, a motion offense and san antonio played beautiful basketball in 2014 the year before the warriors won with motion uh, uh basketball um and, and so he had magnets that he moved around uh, on a, um, a cookie, a, mag, uh, a metal cookie uh, uh, sheet, um, uh, something that uh, I copied when I was coaching. And so here you've got uh, uh, the short list of greatest NBA coaches, and Kerr uh, worked for both of them, and he learned a lot. So Lake of New that uh, uh, this Kerr guy was going to be good because uh, see this guy sitting next to him on the bench at Phoenix? That's Lakeup's son. <laughs> Lakeup's son. Thus do little things matter. Um, okay, so now he's with the uh, Golden State uh, Warriors and uh, Kerr and Curry launched the three-point uh, revolution, um, brand new. Um, and there's, Curry is second place in uh, three-point accuracy to, who do you think? Steve Kerr. Uh, but, but it's based uh, on uh, less, far, far fewer statistics. So, Curry's uh, uh, record is, uh, as in second, is uh, uh, statistically much more significant than, than Kerr's. I like this, as I was uh, reading for this. What if they, they <laughs> created a four-point four line? line. <laughs> a four-point line, and uh, uh, two people would uh, 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 still do well. Uh, if, if you're circled in red, uh, you, you're still uh, doing uh, well, uh, but this uh, uh, C.J. McCollum uh, uh, used to play for uh, Portland is, is pretty pretty good too. Um, so not only did they revolutionize the game, but they became a, a cultural dyad. Um, uh, Fortune magazine put the the two of them together on a list of uh, world leaders, uh, <laughs> number uh, 15, I think. 
Um, and uh, of course, he had a fan, uh, Obama famously played basketball. Uh, and uh, uh, they were number 15 on this uh, uh, top 50 list. And this this essay says it, it's for their ordinariness more than, than anything else. Uh, both of them are skinny, not quite tall, uh, and they wind up being the two best three-point uh, uh, mar marksmen. Um, and mm -hmm. the game's different now. Uh, so uh, Sports Illustrated honored the Warriors as, as, as a team, uh, talking uh, uh, about uh, innovation, cultural impact, injecting uh, uh, joy, looking for the extra pass, um, uh, and for a basketball uh, purist, uh, this is uh, this is heaven. Um, so this is a, a a slide showing that uh, span of the forty year drought, the Mad Russian Tom Macheri, who, by the way, uh, when he retired, uh, uh, went back to school and studied poetry, uh, got a PhD, and teaches in the English department at St. Mary's. He may be retired now. Yeah. And, and, and get this, it's not a surprise. On his mother's side, they link to the Tolstoy family. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> um, all right, so this uh, span in the the forty year uh, drought, and it, this was uh, uh, shown at the uh, dedication of the the practice gym um, uh, in in Oakland. Um, and where's Larry Riley? This is how unfair life is. He got demoted uh, to head scout, and in two thousand eighteen. He finally left for a, a better gig in Atlanta uh, front office, uh, Atlantic Hawks. And the poor guy, does is he getting millions? No, he's relegated to teaching workshops on how to develop elite basketball talent. Do you think he's earned that? Yes, I do. Uh, so I, I, I could try to play the, the Kerr tape. Uh, uh, if you're interested, but I'll 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 stop now. Let's do it. Now we'll look at the big new eyes. Uh, 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 questions, uh, 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 comments. This is Carol. I have a question. Are they going to win? <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, uh, I am at the point where I've been so rewarded by uh, my f uh, fandom. Uh, I think it would be greedy for me to insist on it. <laughs> so I was, I had resigned myself. I think Bill is a witness uh, uh, for this. I, I had resigned myself. I was actually kind of pessimistic before the game on on Sunday, and very philosophical. Yeah, yeah. Six was horrible. What's that? Game six was such a disappointment. It was such a, uh, yeah, I so thought we, we might pull it off, but thank goodness we did seven. Maybe yeah. they play better under, under stress. Uh, I, I, I think maybe so. So I have, I have a question. Yeah. From um, someone of a basketball neophyte, and I never really saw the game until I was 30 years old. Um, Lacob's son, he's, he's highly regarded, isn't he, in, in the management there? Yeah. Is he going to replace Bob Myers? really soon do you think as general manager well as somebody who doesn't know much about basketball you're asking a pretty sophisticated question <laughs> <laughs> it's more a business question i suppose i don't know anybody okay um 
So uh, is anybody interested in seeing the uh, Steve Kerr? Yes. Yes. Um, did, uh, Curry, was he a really good three-point shooter before he met Steve Kerr? Yes. Yeah, at, at, in March Madness mm -hmm. in 2008. He, it, it was crazy. He was doing what we saw Sunday 15 years ago. Uh, just, just nuts. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Uh, it, it, this uh, maneuver is going to uh, create uh, a lot of risk for uh, a challenged person like me. John, if you can't do it, you're going to go teach workshops. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, where is oh, oh, well damn uh, see you know there's the thing hold on hold on John, did you say you were coaching man uh i i coached uh, youth uh, basketball um a long time ago uh, here it is okay now i've corrected my mistake okay. now i go here and now i'm going to do share screen and now it should work okay oh i've got it i've got to click these two yes okay remember the situation michael jordan passed to steve kerr in uh, the last possible second of uh the game uh, but, but but you've seen this before Okay, here we Asking go. Asking me about the shot the other night. Michael in traffic to Kerr. And there have been some misconceptions about what actually happened. I wanted to clear it up. When we called timeout with 25 seconds to go, we, we went into the huddle. If he comes off, I'll be ready. And Phil told Michael, he said, Michael, I want you to take the last shot. And Michael said, you know, Phil, I don't feel real comfortable in these situations. So maybe we ought to go in another direction. Why don't we go to Steve? So I thought to myself, well, I guess I got to bail Michael out again. <laughs> Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. The shot went in, and that's my story, and, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so about a year ago, I got this job, and thank you, Oops. Joe and Peter and Bob, for the opportunity. Oops, sorry. Uh, but I took a look at the roster, and I thought, man, I got a big job on my hands. Um, not much talent. <laughs> you know, He's talking shooting. about Bob Myers. And I thought, you know, we got a lot of work. And I thought somehow in nine months, I've got to teach Steph and Clay how to shoot baskets from really far away. <laughs> teach Are they Paul, talking about you, John? Best defensive <laughs> center in the league. Uh, uh, yeah. Teach Harrison and Sean and all these so guys he, we have on the he, wings to guard five different positions. And he inherited the, and the, the, he inherited the I have to somehow teach Draymond in nine months to become emotional and passionate and confident. <laughs> And to talk trash to the other team and to the opponents, the fans, his mom, to his coaching staff, and to be a general pain in the butt to everybody in the arena. Sorry, that I got a little carried away there. Sorry, Draymond. Somehow I had to teach Andre how to dribble, pass, shoot, rebound, defend LeBron James, and be as gritty a competitor in a final series as there's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> 